Eleven persons have so far given evidence to the Committee of Inquiry probing the shooting at Ejra that resulted in the death of two, with four others injured. As part of the committee's four-day setting, it has questioned ten people publicly whilst the last witness was interrogated behind closed doors. The Ashanti Regional Minister and Chairman of the Regional Security Council, Simon Osei-Mensa, and a journalist with the multimedia group Erastus Asaridonko were the first to appear before the committee on July 6, 2021. The RECSEC chair, Simon Osei-Mensa, justified his decision to engage the military as part of security engagement to restore calm to the area. The people have decided to go and burn the police station houses in which some two accused persons had been arrested by the police and also caused damage to other properties in the ground. So when I heard the intelligence on 29th June 2021, I requested Lieutenant Kendall Pepra to again send some personnel to go and support the police. Erastus Asaridonko also gave an eyewitness account of happenings on the day. My Lord, we saw four armed military men in uniform step out of the military pickup. I first saw one following uh, with the inscription Operation COVID. That's the same pickup, my lord. So four armed military men stepped out of the pickup and then formed a line and started firing into the air. The firing was into the air? Yes, my lord. The firing, my lord, went on for about a minute into the air and then the firing seemed to be coming down being lowered can you, can you explain that or can you demonstrate that into the air then which angle again so initially we saw them when they stepped out of the vehicle they started shooting at this range five witnesses appeared on the second day of the committee's sitting they include general officer commanding Central Command, Brigadier General Joseph Apo, Commanding Officer of 4 Battalion of Infantry, Lieutenant Colonel Kwesi Wari Pepra, and City News' Bureau Chief for the Middle Belt, Edward Opon Marfo. The rest are Deputy Ashanti Regional Police Commander, DCOP David Ajiman Ajim, and Ejra Municipal Police Commander, DCOP Philip Kojo Hamon. Brigadier General Joseph Apo supported the decision by the RECSEC chairman to engage the military during the operations. Not for what we did, together with the police, and I'm telling you because it was already a joint military police patrol that we've been doing, but not for what we did in Ejra. I can bet you there will be more casualties, no deaths to civilians and security al alike, if the chairman of RECSEC didn't give good judgment. And I believe the judgment he gave by inviting us to intervene was the right one. The three of the committee sitting had the MCE for Edra, Mohammed Salis Obamba, and medical superintendent for the Edra Government Hospital. The MCE denied allegations that the suspected killers of Kaka, Ibrahim Isaka, and Fusin Al Hassan were his bodyguards. Were the two people that were um, arrested, are they your bodyguards? Not at all. Is there any reason why anyone would say that they are your bodyguards? The two gentlemen are our party members and they are our polling station executive. And as the chief executive and parliamentary candidate, definitely I will have relation with all my party people on the ground. The committee chair, Justice Kumsen, another member of the committee, Professor Danso, and some of the security personnel who appeared before the committee heavily criticized the reportage of the media on the matter. Journalists also didn't help with their reportage because a lot of tension was created 
when for me there was none. I am sure if they had come to us to seek information rather than go on air and say the things they wanted to say, it would have at least uh, brought the tensions down a bit. But we didn't. That's for our media friends. They, when you talk, they think uh, you are bashing them, but they have the right to bash everybody in Ghana except yes. themselves. Yes, I have. The fact is that uh, we all know that uh, the media, it's the agenda that they set that they want all Ghanaians to follow. So when an incident happens, they sit there, bring out issues, ask people to call in, and uh, express their mind and that becomes uh, the topic for Ghanaians to discuss so don't be worried that they did not contact your outfit to ascertain uh, who Kaka is I am with you uh, you know of late the media they are my friends and uh, I've been bashing them quietly at times they call me and I refuse to talk because they have spoken to somebody they have labeled as security experts even me, I've always warned them not to call me a security expert. I'm an analyst. You get Prof, the degrees. Prof, the minister said you are a security expert. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm with you. Everybody sees on radio a security expert. And the things they, they spew out has nothing to do with expertise in space. However, City News' Edward Opon Marf gave instances where the security personnel denied journalist information on the day of the shooting. We heard that they were at the chief's palace, that the team of the police and the military, uh, they were at the chief's palace. So we went there. Fortunately, the commander, the, uh, DSP Philip, called Joe Hammond, he was there. I also saw the SWAT commander, and I saw the one leading the military team. So I was approaching the commander. I wanted to talk to him. I introduced myself that, oh, I spoke with you yesterday. So. And yes, he said yes, he, he actually uh, he remembers that. And then, as he was about talking to me, the military man who was leading the team came to say that no one will speak to the media and that we should rather go to the town and advise the people. And as a result of that, the commander declined to even speak to me. So he didn't speak to me. Though the family of Ibrahim Mohammed alias Kaka has served notice that it will not appear before the committee, sitting is expected to resume on Monday, July 12, 2021.